Hello, my name is Farrick. Uh, today, I'm just going to be briefly describing how to set up a Factorio server to run alongside the Archipelago multi-world ecosystem. Uh, so you'll have you know, a bunch of Link to the Past games on one side, and then the other side, you'll have your Factorio server, and uh, the Link to the Past players will be sending technologies to Factorio, and Factorio will be researching items and sending those back to the Link to the Past players. Uh, this guide assumes a little bit of knowledge on your part. Um, it does assume that you have all of the uh, Archipelago software installed. Um, currently, at the time of this video, that is 0.0.3. Um, it is pre-alpha software, so expect this process to change very rapidly as development continues. Um, the other thing that uh, you'll need to have is two different Factorio installations on your computer. Uh, one of them will be the one that you will be playing with, and the second is the one that will be hosting the server for you. Um, so you'll see here I have a Factorio main um, up on top, and this is just uh, a link to the Factorio that launches through God Galaxy for me. And then I have another link to Factorio standalone, uh, where I installed my second uh, installation of Factorio. Um, if you haven't um, an idea of where to get another like copy of it or how to download it twice through whatever store you bought it through. If you just go to factorio.com, it'll allow you to log in and download the installer. So you can feel free to install it again a second time. So one important thing to note about having two Factorio clients on your computer is Factorio uses a lock file to prevent itself from being launched twice, right? So you can't have more than one Factorio open. We need to override that so that you can have both running at the same time because you do need to have a server and then the game that you'll be playing, assuming that you're going to be playing in your own uh, Factorio server. Uh, so inside of your Factorio installation directory, um, I recommend this to be the directory that you'll be hosting the server from. Uh, you'll find a file called config-path.cfg. You want to pop that open and there are two things here you'll need to take note of one your config path needs to be path to the executable and then up two levels to config and all that means those dots um, you'll see that it you have to go down two levels in the folders to get to factorio.exe so you go up two levels and then it's asking for config and conveniently that's right here right so we're going to be using that folder in the very near future i just need you to know where that is um, so the other thing in this file to change is this use system read write data directories variable that needs to be set to false. Uh, if you don't change that to false, what will happen is Factorio will write your config files to your app data folder, uh, which is probably the same place that your main Factorio installation will save its config files to and by extension, its lock file. So it'll still prevent itself from launching twice. So you need to make sure that this variable is false. Okay. So once we have the two Factorios installed side by side and they can both function independently, uh, the next thing you need to do is get into your Archipelago folder and you'll need to open up host.yaml. Uh, in your host.yaml, currently near the bottom, there are some Factorio options. You'll need to change your executable to the location on your drive where your server Factorio is located, the, the installation that you'd like to use as the server. For me, that's in D Factorio bin. And you'll notice here that I have two backslashes between each directory. Uh, this is required on Windows machines. Uh, okay, so once you have your host.yaml file configured, um, put this over here. Um, make sure in your output folder that it's empty or that there aren't too many things in there because you'll it just, it gets tough to see when there's a hundred things in there. So in your players folder, uh, you'll need at least one YAML file for Factorio and you'll need another one for uh, Zelda if you want any Zeldas to play. Technically, you don't need any Zeldas. Factorio can generate on its own. So uh, inside of your Factorio YAML, um, you just need to make sure that the name is something to do with um, Factorio. I like to use novice because it's the name of the planet Factorio takes place on. And then also make sure that game is Factorio, just so you know you actually get a Factorio game to generate. And I'm not going to go into more details on the YAML. That information is currently in flux anyway, and it's going to change. Um, yeah, just need to move this over here. Okay. So once you have your YAML files in place, uh, we're going to go ahead and start this process. So we'll open up a PowerShell window, and we're going to run multi-mystery. 
And that's going to start your archipelago server, create your patch files. It'll also create a mod for Factorio. Um, you've probably seen this before. Um, so inside of your output folder, you'll now see those files. Here's your zip file that you would normally send to the people who are playing. It contains all the Zelda patch files and that sort of thing. Uh, but you also, more importantly, have this archipelago-client-some-big-number zip file. You want to take that zip file and copy it into the mods directory in both your server and in your main Factorio installations. And so that just enables the mod uh, in both of those locations. All right, so the next thing to do is to create a save file in Factorio using that mod. So what we need to do is hop over to uh, whichever Factorio you would normally use to play and just launch Factorio. So just go to single player, new game, go to free play, um, hit next. You can use whatever preset you'd like. It's just going to tell the world how to generate and hit play. All right, so just generate yourself a world. You can skip your cutscene, immediately pause the game, save it. You need to save it as Archipelago. This is important. The name matters. Save it as Archipelago. So save that, and then we can quit. Just get right on out of there. We are done with Factorio for the time being. We're going to come back to that when we actually play. So now, go into your Factorio. For me, that's main. It's the place where I just created that save file, and you'll see archipelago.zip is stored here. I'm going to take that file, and I'm going to put it into my archipelago base directory. Right? So it's going to live right alongside of you know testing to USB to SNES and all this other stuff that you probably have here. So at this point, we need to open another PowerShell window. And we're going to run hi factorio client.hi. So this is going to ask you to please connect to an archipelago server, but it's also going to start spitting out all of the factorio server information because what's happening here is you're running the factorio client, but the factorio server that's running in the background that, that is uh, that you pointed to inside of your host.yaml file has been activated and that's you're looking at the server output that gets spit out and it's just piping its output through uh, Factorio client. So all you need to do here is type slash connect and then the address that your server is located at. So this is asking for the archipelago server. Uh, so in my case that's localhost and press enter. So I, for whatever reason, this is just like spitting out some stupid stuff at me. You will uh, connect here in just a second. It may or may not spit out strange information for you. Um, there we go. So it's asking you to enter the name of your slot to join this game. Um, that is asking for the name that you used inside the YAML file for Factorio. So in my case, that is novice and there we go. So novice team one has joined the game, client 003, tag archipelago. And if you look at your archipelago server, you'll notice that novice on team one has joined the game, right? And so what that means is your Factorio server is now connected as a client to the archipelago server. So at this point, you can feel free to give your IP address to whomever. Um, they'll be able to connect to your Factorio server uh, as normal and play there and um, your Zelda players can connect to the Archipelago server as normal, and they will be communicating back and forth. You are done here. Um, that's it. You're good to go. Feel free to launch up Factorio, connect to your own server, have a great time. Um, hopefully, Bottle Merchant is not selling nuclear power. Have a good one.